Hey what's up, my name is Samuel Leeds and I'm a property investor. I've been buying houses for the last 12 years. Normally when a house sucks and it needs a lot of work, you can just tell by walking in it, it's just obvious. Sometimes there are problems with properties that are not that obvious to the naked eye. Over the last 12 years of buying properties, I mean, I'm not an expert when it comes to building and structures and surveys, but I am an expert when it comes to investing in property. So I'm gonna give you the layman's version, the things that you need to look out for when buying properties, the things that people try and cover up, but literally the house can be completely unmortgageable if it has one of these problems. So these are the top 10. Number one is damp. Now damp isn't necessarily an absolute deal breaker, but if there's, if there's severe damp problems in the property, it can cost thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds to fix. And sometimes the current owners can just paint over the damp and you look at it and it looks great. You're in a room like this and you think this looks really nice, but really it's not. How do you know? Well, you just smell. And if it smells a bit damp, just a bit musty, there's, an, there's a chance that there might be damp there. Now, uh, you can sometimes see as well, if the walls just look a little bit wet, you're thinking, ah, you know, that could be damp as well. So make sure that you do get a survey on the property to check for damp before you buy it, especially if you suspect that there could be damp. Number two is structural problems. If the house feels a little bit rocky, Sometimes you almost, you, it feels like you're in a boat. I've been in houses that are so, uh, the, the subsidence is so bad, the house is sinking, the, the, the floors are uneven. Now it might be historical subsidence, which isn't necessarily a deal breaker because it's, 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 it's historical, it's not gonna get any worse. But again, be very, very careful if the house feels a bit wonky or if there's cracks in the walls. Now if there's a crack in the wall, but the wall is a plasterboard wall, knock on the wall, and if it has a hollow sound and it's just plasterboard, it's not really a big deal. But if the wall is a brick wall and there's a crack, what you wanna do is you wanna look on the outside of the building and if the crack goes right the way through, that means that you have a structural problem. The whole property might be unmortgageable, something you need to really, really watch for when buying a property. Number three is non-standard construction. Now, if the house is built with bricks, Bricks are pretty safe. Lenders and mortgage companies, if it's a brick built house, which most houses are, sometimes they'll render over the bricks. So it doesn't look like it's been made out of bricks. It just looks rendered. Um, but if it's brick house, usually pretty safe. If the house has been built with non-standard construction, so it's a concrete house or it's something a little bit different, um, it might mean that the house is not as secure, it's not as safe, and lenders are very, very skeptical of that. I've met people, some of my students even, they've said to me, oh my gosh, all the houses in the street are selling for 100,000 pounds, I've managed to get mine for 80,000 pounds, but it's because all the houses in the street are brick, but theirs is of non-standard construction, and that's why it's so cheap. So watch out for that, that can also be completely unmortgageable. Number four is, has there been an extension on the property that you're buying? Maybe a conservatory, maybe there's a, um, an attic conversion, which is now a bedroom. That's not a problem, but has there been planning permission on that extension? If not, it might be that the extension or the conversion was done illegally, and it's gonna, it's, you might have to, you might buy the house and then you inherit the problem and then you could have to literally strip out the attic conversion. You could have to knock down the extension. I mean, it can get pretty rough. So if there's any new extensions or conversions to me in the house, ask to see for planning permission. A little tip I'll give you is, if there is, an, um, if there is a room that's been built recently or being converted recently and the house is being sold, the estate agent will refer to it as something like space or they'll call the bedroom upstairs attic space. That means that the bedroom is probably not got planning permission, so that's something you need to be really, really careful of before buying a property. Number five is just general unusual legality problems. So things like a flying leasehold issue, um, a ransom strip in the garden, a restrictive covenant on the property that might prohibit you from doing things that you might want to do, like have an office in the property or rent the property out. So this is something that you need to be really careful of. And what I would suggest is just have a solicitor that speaks plain English and always when you're buying a property, have a good dialogue with your solicitor and make sure that they tell tell you if there's any red flags as far as the legalities are concerned. Also be really upfront from the very beginning with your solicitor and with the agent and with everybody and your mortgage brokers about what the purpose of the use is of the property. Number six, you need to watch out for 
Dodgy electrics. Rewiring a house, in other words, getting new electrics across the house, can be very expensive. It might cost around about five thousand pounds if the electrics are completely shot and how you check for electrics there's different things you can do you can look at the fuse box if the fuse box is an old style fuse box it will look like this then that probably means that the electrics might need changing pretty soon the fuse box should look more like this this is a new fuse box most fuse boxes look like this and it gives you an idea that it's safe second thing is to check when the electrics were last serviced i would uh, suggest they should be serviced in the last five years sometimes you'll be buying a house the electrics haven't been serviced or looked at for 12 15 years you are going to need to look at the electrics and spend some money which is going to come out of your profit um, third thing as well with the electrics is are the lights on are there any really obvious red flags i went to one property and it looked okay the property was in great condition but there was wires hanging from the ceiling with little bits of sellotape attached onto them massive red flag and it turned out that it needed a complete rewire which was going to cost four thousand pounds so dodgy electrics is always something that you need to look out for and you don't need to be a super electrician to be able to spot the red flags number seven thing you need to watch out for this is something that most people don't look at they look at the kitchen and the bathroom and they never look at this but this is one of the things that can be very costly if you buy it and it's broken and that is the roof <laughs> Needing a roof to be fixed, again, is going to be in the thousands of pounds. And how do you check whether the roof is broken? How do you check whether the roof needs fixing or not? And the answer is to take a step back from the house and look at it. If there are obvious missing tiles and cracks and things aren't in alignment, you're probably going to need to spend some money on the roof, maybe potentially get uh, the whole roof redone. The roof should look neat. It should look tidy. Make sure that it doesn't bow. Again, if it bows uh, and it looks a bit sloppy uh, or droopy, then you might need to spend money on the roof. Any issues with this, if you have any concerns at all, get a professional in to come out, look at it, and give you a quote before you buy the house. Number eight is check for mine shafts and high risk flooding areas. Now, mine shafts under the property will potentially make the property unmortgageable. It will also significantly reduce the resale value of the property. So how do you find out if there's a mine shaft under the property? If the estate agent knows, they are obliged to tell you up front and it should be on the description on Rightmove or wherever the property is being sold. You can also check for this online. It doesn't cost very much at all. I think it's around about 30 pounds and you can check there's a mine shaft under the property. Also, you can check the air Area. Is it a high risk flooding area? Again, although that might not affect the cost of the property, the insurance is going to be significantly higher if there is a high flooding risk. So check these things. These are things that also can catch people out when you're just starting out. Number nine, and this is a really obvious one, but if the property is leasehold, make sure that the lease is very long on the property. So the difference between freehold and leasehold, if it's freehold, you buy the house and you're also buying the land. If you're buying a leasehold property, you're buying the house, but you're not buying the land. Now that's not necessarily terrible if you're buying the house and the land is, and you've got a lease on it for say 100 years, but if there's a short lease on the property, that could really scupper you because when, it come, when the lease runs out, then you're left at the mercy of the freeholder who owns the land and they could then charge you an absolutely ridiculous rent and force you to have to make some drastic changes and also the value of the property could, could almost become zero. So just make sure when you're buying a property, there's a long lease on it. If it's freehold, then brilliant. If the lease is short, make sure that you find out how much it's gonna to cost to renew the lease before you buy the property. Really, really important. A lot of newbies that are starting out think, oh my gosh, this house is so cheap, but what they don't realize is it's leasehold. The lease isn't particularly long on the property. So this will always, if you're buying a property online on Rightmove, it will always be on the description, but ultimately, again, it's your responsibility to do your due diligence and check this before you buy the house. Number 10, this is one of my personal favorites, Japanese knotweed. Japanese knotweed for property investors is an absolute nuisance. It's a pain, it's deadly, it grows through concrete, it spreads, it can literally pull down the, the, the foundations of your house and make your house completely worthless. Now, Japanese knotweed, you can't just pull it out and put it in the dump. In fact, it's illegal to take, take it to the skip because it's so deadly. We thought that it looked pretty. The Brits brought it into this country as a decoration plant, not knowing how deadly it was. So if you have Japanese knotweed in your garden, if you're looking at a house that has Japanese knotweed, am I saying that you should not buy the house? 
Absolutely not. In fact, it makes sense to buy properties with problems as long as you know how to fix the problem before you buy the house. So if you've got Japanese knotweed, I've bought properties with Japanese knotweed, but I've always had a professional to come in and give me a quote to get rid of the Japanese knotweed or insure it and put it under management. That might cost a few thousand pounds, but make sure if you suspect Japanese knotweed, you get a professional in to look at the property. So those are the 10 top things that could make your property unmortgageable. If I've missed any, if you can think of any other problems with properties that might make a house unmortgageable, please do comment below. I did a whole video on this called What Makes a Good Property Investment? I think you'll really like the video. Check it out right here. Also, if you'd like to find deals in a really good environment and can become financially free in property, you need to come on the Property Investors Crash Course. You can book on right here. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and you can do that over here. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe.